Welcome to our new series, Behavior Tip Tuesdays, brought to you by the Inclusion and Behavior Support Program here at DECAL. We are so glad that you've joined us today as we discuss five to one deposits, descriptive and specific praise, as an effective strategy that encourages positive behaviors in young children. I'm Fashel Gardner, and I'm Inclusion and Behavior Support Specialist for the Inclusion and Behavior Support Program, serving the Northwest region of the state. Hi everyone, my name is Arielle Stokes and I am also an Inclusion and Behavior Support Specialist servicing the Inclusion and Behavior Support Program and I currently work in the Central East region of the state. So we will be your tipsters for today's session. It's great to be here with you all and thank you all for joining us. So during the month of July and August, the Inclusion and Behavior Support Program is launching a campaign that aims to equip early childhood educators with useful strategies and resources while also spreading awareness about the coaching and training services we offer statewide. Our campaign is called Planting the Seeds for a Successful School Year. So over the next couple of months, there will be opportunities for you to get to know our inclusion and behavior support team, and also to gain access to valuable resources that center around inclusive classroom practices with a focus on promoting social emotional development. We want to partner with you to build your toolkit so that you feel prepared and supported moving into the new school year. So during our Behavior Tip Tuesday series, we are excited to share effective teaching practices that will help set the stage for early learning opportunities within the classroom environment. Our previous Behavior Tip Tuesdays have focused on discussing the power of choice, do versus don't, providing positive language, and executing successful transitions. Our behavior tip today will focus on five to one deposits where we will discuss the importance of descriptive and specific praise. The final session for Behavior Tip Tuesday series will focus on setting classroom expectations. So be sure to tune in each Tuesday for our behavior tip of the week. During today's session, we will explore five to one deposits, descriptive and specific praise. So let's just begin by discussing some really simple but powerful steps that adults can take to really begin to address challenging behaviors in an effective, systematic way. Going into a new school year, it's important to, to pre-plan the ways you'll teach and reinforce appropriate behaviors from day one. Additionally, we encourage teachers to have a general plan for how to address challenging behaviors in children. Having a plan can minimize stress and chaos when difficult situations do arise. While the strategies we share in this series can be useful in a number of scenarios in general, we suggest that teachers really use their power of observations as patterns of challenging behaviors begin to arise. Through your observations, you are able to understand so much about a child's behavior, like when and where incidents often I mean, happen most often. What tends to trigger the behavior and perhaps why the behavior may be occurring? As you observe and assess, you are better able to determine what a child may be trying to communicate through his or her behavior. You're able to plan out behavior supports more intentionally and more strategically. You can ask yourself, when specifically during the day do I need to implement some of the strategies I've learned? When does this child tend to need some extra support? And how will that look? Then proceed by implementing your plan behavior strategies. So you will notice us reviewing this process at the beginning of each Behavior Tip Tuesday episode as these steps pave the path towards a proactive prevention-based approach to behavior as opposed to a reactive approach. So now let's hop in and learn one very useful and effective strategy when building relationships with young children. So we all know that providing children with positive feedback throughout the day boasts children's self-esteem and it also encourages uh, their uh, self-confidence. Praise says to the child, I like what you, I see what you're doing and I like it. Giving children praise that is an essential tool in relationship building. Dr. Rita Pearson said, children don't learn from people they don't like. So as a teacher, you must invest time and be intentional in relationship building before learning can begin. 
So a metaphor for building positive relationships that we find particularly helpful is that of a piggy bank. So whenever teachers and caregivers engage in strategies to build positive relationships, it is as if they're making a deposit into a child's relationship piggy bank. Based on the work of Carolyn Webster Stratton, this example illustrates the idea of making deposits and withdrawals into a child's emotional piggy bank. So we make deposits when we do things to build relationships and we make withdrawals when we engage in behaviors that will tear down relationships. We all know that the way to a happy bank account is to make more deposits than withdrawals. This is true of relationships as well. The ratio of positive to negative should be at least five positive interactions for every one negative. So when we become more mindful of the need to increase the number of positive interactions, relationships with children become stronger and the emotional climate of the classroom shifts to become more positive. But what does it mean to give descriptive and specific praise? Ariane, what do you think? Um, I would have to say that descriptive and specific feedback means going beyond the simple phrase of good job. So being descriptive and specific provides details that lets children know exactly what he or she did based on the expectations set for the classroom. Being descriptive and specific with deposits can also motivate children to want to do more of that good thing because the teacher noticed what they did and communicated that to them. When we're descriptive and specific in providing praise feedback, we're building up that child's emotional piggy bank, we're boosting their self-confidence and their self-esteem, and we're also creating a positive relationship with that child. I agree. Giving descriptive specific praise is also about noticing the efforts rather than the results. When in group care, sometimes children's efforts go unnoticed or the fact that they did not meet the objective overshadows the fact that an effort was made with the best intention. Letting the child know that you see them and that, you are, that they're moving in the right direction rather than pointing out that they've not achieved the original objective could mean the difference in not only the child, the relationship between the teacher and the child, but it could also make a difference in the child's self-confidence. Being specific ties the behavior noticed back to the expectation of the environment. Now let's give some examples of what this looks like in various environments in a child care program. So let's look at an example of providing descriptive and prescriptive and specific praise to infants. So here we see two infants holding hands on the carpet, saying something like, oh, that's very sweet. It's pretty vague and children may not understand exactly what you're talking about. But saying something like, Jack, I see you holding Drew's hand. You're being very gentle. Notice that this statement is descriptive and specific. Using a child's name along with talking about exactly what is happening sends a positive message to children. So for Shell, what might you say in this scenario? I don't know. I might say, Jack, I like the way you're using gentle hands with Drew. Drew's a friend. Thanks, Michelle. That was a great way to provide descriptive and specific feedback. So let's look at a toddler environment. Here we can see that two children are playing together on the carpet. There are so many positive things that are taking place here that we can't just say, good job, because it is not descriptive, nor is it specific. So for this interaction, I might say something like, Emma and Raina, I like the way you two are playing so nicely in the block area. It looks like you two are working very hard to build something and I can't wait to see what it looks like when you're finished. Uh, I like it. So I might say, Emma and Raina, you're working together to build a structure. I see so many beautiful colors. Working together, we can do so many great things. So by saying statements like this, I'm reiterating the language that is used and reassuring the child that they're following the expectation. So what does this look like in the preschool or pre-K classroom? So Fischel, if you were a teacher in the classroom and you noticed that Johnny has come to the carpet when asked for the very first time this week, how would you give him specific and descriptive praise that lets him know exactly what he is doing? So for this, I might say, Johnny, I see that you've joined your friends on the carpet and you're ready for circle time. What a great way to show you're ready to learn. Thanks, Johnny. I like the way you worded that. That was both descriptive and specific. 
I might say something like, Johnny, I know how much you like to sit by yourself during circle time, but today you chose to join the whole group and I'm really proud of you for that. So remember, by giving children descriptive and specific praise, we are describing exactly what the child is doing and also tying it back to an expectation of the environment. Don't forget, it is important to celebrate the child's effort. Children need to know that their efforts are just as important and just as valuable as their successful completion of what's expected of them. So here are a few resources to help with understanding the importance of descriptive and positive feedback and its significance to a child's emotional piggy bank and relationship building. The National Center for Pyramid Model Innovations or the NCPMI website has an abundance of resources and webinars that teachers can access at any time. So that concludes today's Behavior Tip Tuesday. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any uh, questions about the content of this, um, or if you'd like to learn more about the services and supports that we offer here at DECAL, please give us a call at 833-354-4357 or email inclusion at decal.ga.gov. We would love to hear from you all. And don't forget to tune in next Tuesday where we will be discussing the importance of setting expectations in the classroom during our next Facebook Live. So thank you all for tuning in and we will see you all again soon.